Hey, announcer guy here for Sean and Kevin, world travelers who occasionally go to places you haven't been. In this episode, the boys are in Turks and Caicos. So settle in and welcome to Travel by Numbers. from the airport to your resort is pretty simple. If you haven't prearranged anything, they have a bunch of vans there and they charge $16 US uh, per person uh, to take you and your luggage to your resort. Or you can take a cab, cabs are more expensive. You'll hear people beeping their horns as they go by you when they're down there. They recognize you as a tourist. And what the beep means is that they're willing to pick you up and drive you, you know, wherever yeah, you want. So going. that's their form of, of Uber. Um, and I think it's totally safe. I don't think I've ever heard anybody having no. a difficult time or, you know, um, about just having a, taken a ride from one of those vehicles that pass by that beeps. We should probably talk about safety on the island, though, because uh, some islands down there, of course, are not safe, like Jamaica and Dominican Republic. Um, those, those islands, if you're a tourist going there, you would probably not want to walk around outside of your resort complex unless you're on an organized tour. But Providencialis is extremely safe. Um, the only time they run into trouble is when they have sloops uh, try to come over to the island full of migrants. Um, these are migrants that uh, might be coming from Jamaica or, or Haiti. Haiti. Yeah. And most often they don't actually get to land on the island. The government has installed a bunch of electronic uh, sensors around the island, so they sort of know when sloops are coming and intercept them. But occasionally a sloop will get by and, you know, maybe 20 people will run up the shore and then those people are hard to round up. So they've landed on an island, they don't have any food, they don't have any job, they have no water, they have no accommodation. Um, so any um, wrongdoings um, usually are uh, done by those people who are desperate because of their situation. Doing chest up or how? I don't care. I have a bait, no bathing suit on. You're good. How do I look? Okay. I always tell her. Uh, Should I stand to my side? Should no, I do this? <laughs> uh, I'll just move. I can do the whole body. You're good. Okay, there, Shannon. Uh, okay. Move over to uh, yeah, there. Hi, I'm Heather. I'm Shannon, and welcome to Hemiways. We're here getting ready to have some fantastic lunch: fish tacos, cock fritters and maybe, just maybe, we might see Jojo. So come on and join us for lunch. <laughs> Yay. Oh, she's blowing up. If we're talking about dollars in terms of what we spend on food per day, I think we, I think the average is about $70 USD per day and that's you know three meals a day and you can eat quite well but don't forget everything it has about a 30 percent increase on everything yeah and the reason for that is because they don't have um, sales tax on a lot of things they don't have personal 
income tax and they don't have property tax. So what the government does instead is everything that comes into the island is charged a 30% tax. I guess which which goes towards supporting the infrastructure. The one thing you will find is when you go to some of the more touristy supermarkets like Graceway Gourmet or the main Graceway uh, supermarket on Leeward Highway, uh, you'll find the prices are two to three times what you're used to. So for instance, you can get a small 12 inch pepperoni pizza for uh, around $16. Two liters of orange juice is around $6 US. And a jar of peanut butter is like $10. Yeah, so things are very, very expensive. So it would benefit you to find a place, for instance, that offers breakfast uh, with your accommodation because then at least that one meal is covered. I remember last year when we went, we went out for dinner at this Italian restaurant and I ordered a pizza and the pizza was about the size of a standard dinner plate. It came out to $43 Canadian. Yeah, but you know what? I I honestly think that um, don't let the prices stop you from going to uh, Turks and Caicos because lots of packages online are outrageous, but you can really do it on the cheap and low. You can do a lot of Airbnbs. You can, I think we go through Coldwell Banker and they can scout out different places for you to stay. So don't let that stop you in terms of what you see online because you can certainly do it yourself a la carte. Um, and there's only a few all-inclusive resorts on the island. So here we are at Hemingway's having our first little appetizer of conch fritters. Enjoy. <laughs> So what would you say, Kevin, the top, let's say, three restaurants in Turks and Caicos? So I would say my top three would be Hemingway's for sure. You've got a beautiful beautiful view. The service is excellent. Menu is a wide selection. So there's Hemingway's and then there's, uh, well, the, the iconic conch shack. Seven stars. Oh yeah, that was very good. Right. Now, of course, you're, it's, a, it's a little pricey. We also went to a well-known establishment, Mr. Grouper. It, um, yeah. It's fantastic. <laughs> it's funny because we've, with, uh, you know, with four people, we've gone out for dinner at some of the higher end uh, restaurants before and spent over $400 uh, amongst the four of us just with one bottle of wine. But Mr. Grouper's was yeah. one of the best places that we've eaten and very inexpensive. The thing with with uh, Providencialis or Provo, as they call it, you'll see grouper used for a lot of things. If you go to Danny Bowie's, which is a Irish pub, and order fish and chips, for instance, the um, fish portion, of course, will be made with grouper, uh, which is a treat for us, being from outside Toronto, because we actually can't get grouper. What impact on the body and also how why not? Good way to get around. Like, for some people. Yeah. So, we're just at the local shopping center. It's called Salt Mills Shopping Center. And we're just going to look at a few shops. So, come join us. You won't find many DDC shops here. Some beautiful jewelry stores. But there's not any big flagships uh, stores like you'd see in other islands. It's still fantastic selection. Salt Mills is your main shopping area. Of course, you have your high-end stores. I don't know if Turks and Caicos is really known for their shopping. Certainly duty-free, clothing, uh, craft goods. They also have a bicycle shop there and a few restaurants in Salt Mills. There's also another shopping uh, center across the street. Uh, I think it's called Regency Village. Hello. I'm representing Rightfully Fitness Gym here in Providentia Alice. That's the Turks and Caicos. The best gym there is. Try it. How much is it? How much is the gym? It's $25 a day for a gym, $60 a week, $100 a month, and $250 for three months. Thanks so much. Okay. Have a nice day. You too. Uh, 
uh, Turks and Caicos, they don't have a they don't have a lot of uh, franchises. Like you won't see a KFC, you won't see a McDonald's, you won't see a Starbucks. Um, and, and I think that's on purpose. Yeah, they don't let them in there. I think it's a good thing actually. It, it uh, forces you to go to sort of like mom and pop restaurants and support the locals there. Um, it is a foodie haven though, there's no doubt about it. Uh, if you are a restaurant uh, that is not serving uh, food that is up to a certain standard, uh, you won't survive down there. So it's, a, it's all world-class chefs. The other restaurant that we alluded to earlier called De Conk Shack is probably the island's best known beach restaurant. Uh, they serve uh, conch fresh out of the ocean. They have their own uh, bit of a conch farm there. So you can see them go out there and get it for you and and uh, take the meat out of the um, conch right on the beach. You you have to experience that if you're at, you know, if, if, if you go to Turks and Caicos, it's, it's a must-see to do. And try and do it on a Wednesday night because Wednesday night is their music night. You will need to make a reservation though. Uh, it's very busy. It's always very busy. And the sunsets are amazing. I don't think you could see a bad sunset there. If you're on Grace Bay Beach, if you're at the Conch Shack, if you're at Chalk Sound, amazing views. Hi, it's Heather again. Uh, on our way to Sweet Tea's to get some chicken and fries. It's one of the places where the locals go. Um, the chicken there is very good, so close to the airport. It's kind of an awkward place. It's like a little pink building that doesn't look like anybody really is there, but there is always people there um, standing in line waiting for this chicken. Um, one of the pluses here in Turks and Caicos is actually is an inexpensive place to get some chicken, but very, very good. So wait and see, we'll show you here in a few. So here we are at Sweet Teas, and very confusing trying to order here. You don't really know what you're getting for the money that you're actually putting towards it. But if you come a little closer, I'll show you what $5 worth of chicken looks like. Very interesting. So you just kind of go up, you just say, I want $5 worth of chicken and here's what you get. And then a dollar of fries gets you this. So lots of food for great price and the food's fantastic. I highly recommend coming here. Great place right here at Sweet Teas. If you enjoyed today's episode, please click the like button. And by subscribing and turning notifications on, you'll help us create new content. Thanks for watching. And remember, experiences, not things.